Hi everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph video clip. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about fear. Now fear can be really crippling and something which stops us moving forward. It's in the same category as stress and some kind of bad feeling. Now, recently, many of you have been telling me that one of the biggest issues you have around learning is stress and fear. And I also feel this sometimes when I'm learning a language. You know, sometimes uh, we're halfway through a book or a magazine or something and something just comes to us. It's very hard to describe, but it's kind of like a tense feeling. And it tells us, I can't do this. This is terrible. I'm going to close the book and walk away. It might be related to the amount of money you've spent for the book or the course that you've just bought, but there is something inside that's really bursting to get out, you know? And it's not always clear even what that is. I have a friend who was learning to play the piano. And you know, one day she just got up, she closed the lid, she walked away. And whenever she saw a piano from that day forward, it filled her with such rage that she really, really got very upset. It's not quite like that with language learning. Many of us close the book and walk away. Many of us try to study and we're so filled with this thing that comes up that we just have to stop and maybe go surfing on the internet or go for a little walk. And the question is, what is that thing and how do we deal with it? Well, we're living in a world now where supposedly you can buy and sell anything. So many of you have started off your journey by buying a course or buying a book because you've been promised something. English in two months, fluency in six months, one month fluency, fast track English, only 10 euros. This kind of thing is infecting all of us. And these kind of marketing techniques travel through the world quicker than any virus could. And no matter how savvy you are in defending yourself, it's going to catch you. So I think when the realization comes that that book isn't all that it promised to be, that causes a lot of stress. And that brings us to what I want to talk to you about today. And that is having realistic expectations when you're learning to avoid this great feeling of fear. I think the first thing that you need to do is to learn to separate the fear and the stress from learning English. The two things are not actually related. It's true that your expectations may not have been met, but that's no reason to feel bad or to rush away and throw yourself into the river. Usually fear comes up as a warning for something physical to tell your mind and body that um, something isn't right and it may not at all be related to the learning process. One way of dealing with it when it comes up, what I do is I just think to myself, how did I feel, how did I feel one hour ago? How did I feel one hour ago? One hour ago I was calm or how did I feel in my last, let's say for you, English lesson? And you can say, well, I was smiling and happy. Okay, well, if you were smiling and happy one hour ago or at the last English lesson, that fear that you're feeling now 
has got nothing to do with English. And you'll probably tell me, well, actually, it has, because I found 10 new words that I didn't know today. Yesterday, I only found two in my book. Okay, well, that happens, you know, but there's still no reason to feel so fearful about it. It just means that today has been more difficult. I think part of the problem also is that when we try to learn anything, the way that we do it is we look back. We don't look forward to learning. We tend to look back. Many of us, including myself, didn't really enjoy school very much. We have memories of being told to face the front. We have memories of being bullied by other people, teachers who, for whatever reason, were trained to punish us, not to encourage us. Whatever memories you have of school, this is the baggage that we're carrying with us into learning English. And all of this stuff is there in the background. We buy an English book, we open it, we flick through it, and we think, oh, great. And immediately our heart starts pumping a little bit faster because we think, mm, well, this is a bit like school, isn't it? But I want to tell you something. It doesn't have to be that way, especially when you're older. It's true that school for us really wasn't worth it. We, we didn't get very far. We didn't learn very much. And all it did was give us a sense of fear. Does it sound familiar? That sense of fear. So you see, learning itself is kind of a loaded word. It's kind of up there along with stress and other words which are largely negative in our vocabulary. Not everyone relates to books, okay? Not everyone uh, works that way. Now, many of you will tell me, oh, yeah, but I'm logical. I need a book. And some of you tell me, I'm creative. I can't work with books because they're, they're too narrow. I need to see expression. I need to make my own stuff. Others say, I can't get enough of books because it's the only thing that I can learn from. Have you considered that those books, they're giving you guides, but are they really helping you to communicate? Are they helping you to go up to someone and have a conversation? Of course not. Let me explain something. In my teaching practice, I've been teaching for many years now, I'm aware that in many countries around the world, uh, there is a great emphasis placed on academia. Even here now, it's all about going to college, going to school, studying, getting the right qualification, doing the right thing. In parts of the world, like China and Asia, I've met many people who can tell me all about grammar. They can tell me exactly what a present perfect is or what a future conditional is and in fact many of them know more about grammar than I do but you ask them to use it and suddenly there's a silence because they can't because they've learned all the rules but they haven't learned how to use them all a book is ever going to give you is the rules of the language and maybe a little bit of an example of how it could be used, but it's not helping you use it. And that is another reason why a lot of fear comes up. Because you're saying, I know this, I know these rules, but for some reason, I can't seem to make a sentence. Let me just ask you a question. And this is something, again, which I ask a lot in these video clips. When you think of a four-year-old boy, okay, you know, and imagine that he's perhaps sitting at home 
and he's wondering about speaking. Well, kids generally don't wonder about speaking. They just try to say it. But imagine for a moment he's wondering about a word. Do you think he says, oh, excuse me, mum, I've been wondering about this word. Would you mind just going to the library, getting me an English grammar book and bringing it home? I'd really like to study it. Well, of course he doesn't, because children can't read or write. For us, not being able to read or write puts us into a really vulnerable position, because it means that we ourselves need to become like kids again. Many of us feel the stress of that because, of course, it knocks down our ego. It makes us vulnerable. And for business people, that's not something that's very comfortable with us, you know? So I just want to give you a little bit of advice. First of all, if you are the kind of person who is feeling a lot of fear when you're learning, I mean, there are people out there that the moment they open the book, they're just filled to here with some kind of stress, you know? If you are feeling like that today, don't put yourself through it. Put the book away. As I'm always mentioning, your creativity plus your passion gives you English. So, a five-minute talk or a five-minute conversation with a language exchange partner or a native speaker is going to be far better for you than an hour with a book. Now, I know what you're going to say, oh, but I don't want anyone to hear my poor English. But guess what? A language exchange partner feels the very same about you and your language oh i don't want that person to hear my my bad whatever language it is that you speak it's the best way to deal with this fear by having conversations and the resistance to doing this is absolutely amazing you know whenever i ask anyone what have you been doing with your english Oh, Teacher Joseph, I've been reading. Mm -hmm. I've been learning new words. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Anything else? Um, no, I think that's all. And then I ask, have you been speaking? Speaking? Oh, no, no, no. You're the only person I speak with. So you see, there's a little problem there. And that is, you need to be talking. And there's another myth out there. And that myth is that somehow British people all speak the same way. And we all have the same accents. And there's this idea that you get off the plane, you step into the airport, and you're going to be hearing everyone talking like me. It doesn't happen that way. We all speak differently. We all speak with different uh, tones, different accents. And just like your country, we all use slang as well. So no matter how good your English is, no matter how prepared you are, when you talk to a native speaker for the first time, especially if it's not a teacher, you might suddenly feel, I know nothing about English. And it's true, you've learned all the rules, but you haven't learned how to use them. So if you think you have a little bit of fear now studying, the more natural way to do it is by actually beginning to talk to people and even to exchange messages with them. If you don't want to do it with people, you can do it with AI. Uh, it's very, very able to deal with that now. But whatever way you do it, you need to be doing it especially if you want rid of this fear. But talking with a native speaker brings up more fear. It brings up a, a lot of issues also if you're not the kind of person that enjoys doing those kinds of things. But like all of us, you know, this idea of 
English in two weeks, fluent in five months. It's not going to happen. Why? Because you're not talking to anyone. The quickest people, the quickest learners, are those who are able to make themselves vulnerable. And I just want to give you an example of that. If you imagine that you're in a busy room and two English speakers walk in, okay? One of them has perfect English and he's telling you all about his country that's destroyed by war. And he uses the most eloquent words. Oh, yes, my country has been destroyed, blah, blah, blah. He's gone to Oxford University. He speaks with the perfect English accent, even though he's not native. Okay, so he gets a lot of attention. The other man comes along. He only has a few words of English. But he's able to hold up his arm and say, look, look at the damage my arm has because of the war. He says in broken English that he's lost his family or whoever. Who do you think people are going to remember? Are they going to remember the man with the wonderful eloquent speech because he went to Oxford? Or are they going to remember the man with little English, but who's able to demonstrate very well his problems? Another good example is if, you, if, I, if two men walk into a party and one says, excuse me, would you mind telling me where I can get a glass of wine? And you say, yeah, sure, over there. Another man walks in and he says, Wine? Drink? Where? You probably would smile and you would say, yeah, over there, because it's what a child does. Okay? Now, we all need to start in that place and build a little bit. I know it's hard. I know it's very difficult. But wanting yourself to be brilliant and perfect in every single situation is perfectly normal, especially if we are professional in other areas of our life. But I have to tell you that um, it doesn't work that way in language learning. You know, I remember when I first moved to Spain, uh, I got two words very confused. One was peligroso, which means dangerous, and the other was perdido, which means lost. And I wanted to tell people, excuse me, I'm lost. Where is yeah, the shop or where is my house or where is the street? Yeah, but I ended up telling people, excuse me, I'm dangerous. Where is the shop, please? You know, uh, Perona, um, estoy peligroso. Donde esta la tienda? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm dangerous. Where are the shops? Learning English allows you to be a jerk sometimes. Jerk just means stupid. Okay, we all make mistakes. And no matter how much you try to shelter yourself from it, it's not going to happen. Okay, and if you only pay attention to academia and books and you never try to speak, let me tell you something. The first time you have a conversation with a native speaker, you're going to have a problem. Many of you are telling me, oh, Teacher Joseph, you know, you're the only person I talk to. You're the only person I understand. Your podcasts, I listen to them because I don't understand much else. That's fine, but you need to get the bigger picture, especially when it comes to dealing with fear. Now, just to go full circle, to go back to the very beginning of this um, little recording, let me just give you a few tips, okay? If something is bringing you a lot of stress, then stop doing it. 
If you're opening the book for half an hour, hanging over it with a cup of coffee, and then declaring that your English is great, closing it, moving away, you're probably lying to yourself. Okay. Secondly, if your learning doesn't include speaking of any kind or communicating even by text message or by email, then something is wrong. Many of you, I've been encouraging you to text me. I've been saying, send me a message when you can. Send me a voice recording. I want to, I want to hear you. I want to see you. Just to try to get you to talk more. And this is why I do it. Because I'm aware that it's the only way you are going to learn how to speak better by actually speaking. You might tell me, oh, but teacher Joseph, you know, I speak at work. Yeah, I use a few words at work. I send emails. And uh, that's great if you do, but if you're around non-native speakers, they're not going to hear your mistakes. In fact, they might even be giving you a false confidence, or they might not care how you sound. And if that's all you need English for, great. Okay. So the next time you're hanging over a book, you just to think about this you know and when the fear comes up it's probably because you're studying the rules too much you know another thing that you've heard me saying this a million times is about shadowing you need to be listening to a native speaker and repeating this is the way you speak when there's no one around, this is what children do. They hear, they say, they hear, they say. Not only children, so do birds. Parrots do it. So they can repeat what you're saying. Even some cats can do that. So it's just something for you to think about. So if the book really is torturing you and really becoming a problem, no matter how much it costs, just put it away and think about creating your own English. That could mean you make your lessons by talking to your language partner, by writing down your recipes in English rather than whatever language you're speaking. You need to make your own way. These days of school have all gone. We carry them because... They have a lot of pain. We don't want to go back there because of our ego. So learning doesn't have to be as painful as you're making it. It can take many different forms, but the biggest one of those is love. And I don't mean you have to rush out and sleep with a native speaker, but what I'm saying is, when you have feelings which are usually attached to people or are usually attached to perhaps books or places, it's so much easier. But if English is only in your head, you need to get it a little bit lower to your heart and, you know, just begin to let go a little bit, drop the defense, let a native speaker or someone get a little bit closer let them hear you speak, okay, before you shoot them down. And if you want some, some other ideas about that, uh, maybe you can find a language partner online. I understand that there's issues there depending on where you go to find them, but that's a separate issue. Um, once you have found someone, um, they'll be just as vulnerable with you as you are with them, okay? Find someone of the same sex if it's easier, but you really need to be practicing with someone, okay? And that's it. I just lost one of my earbuds there. So I hope you found this helpful. Let's talk again soon. And if you take nothing away from this podcast, just remember one thing, that fear is fear, it's not always related to your English learning. All right. That's it for me. Take care. See you. Bye.